You're listening to 5-Minute Feng Shui, podcast episode 201, Diagnosing Problems with the Five Elements. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hello there, my feng shui friend. We are here post Thanksgiving and with the holidays coming up, we've got, uh, gosh, Christmas, New Year's, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, oh, and 2023 just ahead of us. And it's hard to believe that we are wrapping up the year of the tiger. Can you believe that? I just, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned at how quickly it has gone. And that's something that I had talked about last year is how quickly the time is going to change the way it's going to feel. Now this year will be a little slower year, but I have a feeling it might be kind of fast too, because it's going to be fun. We've got the year of the rabbit coming and I have my annual feng shui forecast is out and it is live. I want you to go check it out and don't wait because there is a sale going on right now because it is the holiday mood and I've got a fantastic sale for you and make sure that you go over to redlotusletter.com forward slash water rabbit all one word and check out my year of the rabbit feng shui forecast and if you want to buy you can use the words fluffy as the promo code and take ten dollars off the regular insider forecast or use twenty dollar take twenty dollars off and use bunny Uh, for the promo code. And that'll take $20 off my gold level. And I'd love to have you in my gold level. Hey, you listen to me all the time and, and we're friends, right? We talk to one another uh, weekly as I hope anyhow. And I'd love to have you in my gold group. We have an absolutely fantastic group, amazing folks. And I also want to encourage you to please be sure to get out and get, check out that forecast and get your success pack right away because I've got some amazing, bonuses. And you've got to buy it though by midnight, December 8th. That is midnight, December 8th. So you only have a little over a week. So get going over to redlotusletter.com forward slash water rabbit and get those bonuses and get your forecast. So you know exactly how your year is going to shape up and exactly how you can make it the best ever because we got some great stuff coming. Okay, let's talk today about five elements. I know that this is a very basic kind of thing in feng shui, but it's so important. I want to talk about how important it is because of how it can be used to diagnose and kind of remedy some of your most common life problems. So let's dive on into the five elements because these are the five building blocks of feng shui. They're made up of water and wood, fire, earth, and metal. So if your home or office feels off or maybe it's uncomfortable, it might be out of balance with those elements. Maybe you got too much water, too much wood. So just taking a quick look around your home or your office can help you diagnose if there's too much or too little of an element. Now I'll use an example. Um, This would be a log cabin. If you have a log cabin and everything is wood in your home, you might have an overabundance of wood elements. So you would want to balance that with some more fire element and earth elements. Now in a perfect feng shui world, of course, you'll have all five elements present in a room. And this helps keep the room feeling comfortable, harmonious, and balanced. And this makes you more productive, effective, and successful. See how that works? It's genius. Now let's talk about some of the common problems that you can have when your elements are out of balance. Let's talk about lethargy, depression, maybe excess weight. You could have either too little fire or too much water. If you have instability, clouded thinking, hyperactivity, or unhappy relationships, it could be too little earth. If you feel like you're lacking opportunity, you have low career growth, or maybe you feel spiritually disconnected, you may have too little water. If you have poor health, a lack of growth, low vitality, maybe some family disharmony, maybe there's too little wood in your home. If you have 
too much metal, you may have nervous exhaustion, scattered thinking, busy for busy sake, and disorganization. That's too much metal. And if you have too much fire, you could be impulsive. You could be easy to anger. You may have felt frustration and anxiety. You may feel burned out, literally. Uh -huh. I love how the fire makes it easy, doesn't it? <laughs> now, if you have too little metal, you could lack creativity, initiative, or the ability to analyze and work with detail. Now, when there's too little fire, life isn't fun. You have too little enjoyment. You have no zest for living. And well, you know, all that makes for a dull life, right? Now, when there's too little water or wood, and this is when you have either too little water and too little wood, you can have financial problems like too many bills, too too much, too uh, the income is is too small. If you feel that you are stuck in smothering relationships, maybe you're restless, you're boredom, or you have over serious uh, kind of demeanor, that could be too little earth. So let's talk about this element list and let's talk about these kinds of things and how the elements like water, wood, fire, metal have an effect on you. So the first one is the water element. Now the water element relates to business, career, and opportunities. It also has an effect on our emotions, our feelings, and intuition. So when the water element is correctly placed, career and business function much more smoothly. There's progression in your life. You climb that corporate ladder. You see yourself getting promotions. You have raises. Maybe your business flourishes. Water can also help create insights, and it can help you feel inspired, spiritually connected, and refreshed. Now, when there's too much water, though, it can create depression, lethargy, weight gain, and isolation. It um, is one of those things that can often show up like in overly dark homes. Maybe uh, the blinds aren't open, the windows, uh, you don't see sunlight coming through the windows. You have too many dark colors. And when you have a lot of water element, there's a lot of fear around that. And what's interesting is uh, there has been some discussion around weight having uh, an element of fear. So when you have weight gain, that there's an element of fear of releasing and that kind of thing. I, think I find that very interesting when you think about uh, the, the emotional aspect of the water element. So when you have uh, maybe uh, too many dark colors, this could be, or any colors that are, are considered to be watercolors, like blue, too much black color, purple, wave shapes, this can add to having to an excess of water. Now, when there's not enough water, this could be, you know, lack of opportunity. You feel uh, drained. You feel sort of dry. It's It feels like things aren't flowing, quite literally. And you can fix that. You can kind of balance that out by just adding some water colors, using those water shapes, like a wave type shape, figures like a, a seashell, something like that, a pick picture of water, uh, any kind of water figure or, or image is perfect. And of course, you can always use an aquarium, have some fish, or maybe you have um, a, a figurine of, of a fish or some type of, of ocean type uh, pattern. This is a good way to introduce the water element. I really like to see a wavy shape uh, when we're talking about uh, using the water element. If you can find it, it's not always real easy to find that kind of shape, especially like in upholstery fabric and that kind of thing. But if you can find that sort of wave, I think that's good uh, to have that in, in your home a little bit. It creates that feeling like life is flowing versus stuck or stagnant. All right, let's talk about the wood element. Now, the wood element relates to health growth, and advancement. It's an element that relates to your family, the feet, and your oldest son. Now, when wood is correctly placed, the family's happy, health is vibrant, the, the family feels like there's growth, but too much wood can create arguments, fiery tempers, and disagreements and disharmony in the fam family. Also, when wood is lacking, you feel like your life is stalled. It feels stuck. There's little expansion, little growth. Now, you can you can get that kind of growth going again by paying attention to your gardening, looking around your home and looking for rectangular shapes, anything that, that sort of simulates a tall shape of a tree trunk, right? That, that rectangular shape is, is a great uh, shape to have in your home. Brown furniture, you, you can use to add wood energy. You can add actual plants. They don't have to be real. It would be great if they could be real, but they don't have to. You can also use brown and green 
colors. You can also use um, any kind of uh, plant, but don't use them in your bedroom. Instead, just plain furniture. Brown is perfectly fine. If you have brown furniture, that's perfectly fine. You want to have something that looks like wood. Uh, you can have baskets are a great wood element. You can add any, any kind of pictures that are like a landscape scene. That also adds a wood element or actual pictures of trees, which is really beautiful. Like I've seen a lot of murals that are beautiful. Now, if you have dried flowers or bonsai trees or cactus, these are not considered to be positive wood symbols inside. Now, cactus is great. It's great in terms of it's a succulent and holds water, but we just don't want to have it indoors. Having it outdoors is wonderful. Cactus is a great plant, and we don't, I don't want to uh, say that <laughs> it's a bad plant because it's wonderful, actually. But it should be out, used out, outside the house. But get rid of anything that is a plant that doesn't look like it's doing well because if the plant isn't doing well and its health is suffering, yours will too. And we want to always see a plant that looks vibrant and lush and growing. And when you have that, you have a vibrant, lush, and growing family and health too. Now let's talk about the fire element. The element of fire is an element that's uh, not... Uh, naturally present in the earth. It has to be created, right? You know, typically, you, you don't see fires everywhere. You can see earth, you can see metal, you can see you can see uh, wood everywhere, but you don't see fire everywhere, right? It's, uh, it's a spark. It's a, a spark that happens like from lightning, or maybe you might see it in a volcano, but it's not just everywhere, uh, fire element. But this is important because too much fire can can uh, be uh, too much energy. And, you know, a little fire keeps you warm, uh, too much can burn down the house. But fire represents sociability, the family name, good friends, happiness, and joy. That's the element that it represents as joy. Its presence indicates success that can come with fame or public recognition, also with material items. It's material success. So like the nice house or nice clothing or jewelry or cars, that kind of thing. Now, when you have a house that has too much fire energy, it can create a house that's overly stimulated. Nerves are frayed. Maybe you're, you're angry. You have some irritability. Maybe you don't get enough rest. You can't sleep that well. And too little fire can create remote feelings, a lack of ambition or vision. It can also create low self-esteem and little zest or happiness for life. We need that, that fire element. Now, the fire element is symbolized by triangle shapes, lamps, and candles. It's also associated with the color red. So you can add red colors or triangle shapes or more light and lighting to brighten up your home and give it a punch of color and energy. But just be careful with the fire element. Too much can overwhelm your space. You don't want to paint the whole south sector of your home red. A little red can do uh, a lot of heavy lifting in, in the element uh, regard. So you know use that red sparingly, but do have some, some red around. Keep, keep your home well lit and bright. You don't want to come into, you know, a home that feels like a dungeon. And uh, now on the same, the other thing is like homes that have a very, very large windows, or maybe they face the south or the west, where they have a lot of sun. If they have too much sun, it can create a little tension. So just, you know, it, while it's great to have a lot of sunny uh, sort of windows, and lots of sunlight coming in. We just want to make sure it's there's not glare because glare cre creates some irritation, and we don't want to have that. You know, we want to irritation that can create some some uh, tension in the house. Now let's talk about the earth element. The earth element is an element of caring, stability, and calm reserve. And when earth is lacking, there could be a lack of focus, maybe some mental confusion, a lack of clarity. Its shape is square. Now, earth elements help make relationships strong and enduring. Too much earth can create a home that feels kind of sluggish and ineffectual, and it can manifest into low motivation and apathy. Nobody needs that, right? Now, the earth element can be symbolized by square shapes, by stone, ceramic, and crystal elements. It's associated with the colors of ochre, which is that deep gold sort of of um, you sometimes you see uh, Buddhist monks that wear that that dark, rich, golden, yellow color. That's ochre. It's also uh, a color of beige, tan, and yellow are associated with the earth. Now, to boost an earth element, you can add stones or earth-related objects and golden colors 
and they uh, things like ceramics, vases, crystal, crystal glass. To reduce the earth element, uh, you can add more metal because this adds some movement and helps to exhaust earth energy if you have a house that feels too heavy, too dense. It feels like, um, you know, you're, you feel uh, sort of lethargic and very uh, heavy feeling. And maybe that you, if, especially if you have a you know, lots of stone in your house. It can feel kind of heavy and a, some white colors or metal elements can help kind of lighten that up a little bit. And at the same time, if you don't have any earth element, it's important that you introduce that because it's good for the mind and relationships. And that's, that's a, a critical part of, of our, of our life is to our thought processes and, and, and obviously the other people in our life. Now let's talk about the metal element. The metal element is an element of creativity and represents the manifestation of inward flowing movement, which includes wealth. So adding metallic objects like Chinese coins, metallic bowls, and wind chimes brings more metal energy to a home. Um, that would be like an arcing kind of oval or round shapes. Those are all associated with the metal element. Metal energy is perfect for bringing logic, precise thinking, and that ability to think analytically. Uh, ceiling fans, white colors, televisions, stereos, and computers are associated with metal energy. That movement uh, is, is all sort of a metal theme. Now, too much metal can cause too much movement, like speaking for, th for thinking or being hasty. Too little me metal can bring mental dullness and inability to manifest because metal's a conductor. And its presence in a home helps manifest quick thought, decisiveness, and movement. And when you want to activate that metal element, choose anything that is a metallic color like gold, silver, white, or gray. Now, if metal is too prominent, like lots of ceiling fans everywhere, especially like in the kitchen and in the dining room, please don't put them in the kitchen and the dining room. You can add watercolors of blue or black or water elements to help kind of control some of that. And this is something that we can often see like now a, a, a de design trend has been to have lots of gray in, in homes. And while that's nice and it can be kind of relaxing, it can also be, uh, a, it can make you feel fear because metal is the element of fear. Metal rules the lungs and breathing. And just think about when you're sad, what do you do? You go, you sigh. And sighing is an is a a sign that you're sad or feel lack of hope or you have uh, um, you know something that is is pressing on you emotionally and it's expressed through the lungs and that's certainly something that we have had a lot of of lung energy because of COVID. Now uh, there you go. These are the elements and what they do and how you can use them to kind of understand your home and understand your life. Look at your life and think. Hmm, am I having some career movement? Am I having good career growth? That then you have a nice balance of water element. But if you're having problems with your health, maybe you need to look around and see. Maybe you have too much metal in your house and not enough wood. Uh, this, or maybe you have a plant or trees that and landscape that are not doing well and don't look healthy. That's a, that's a good way to use those elements to understand your life. Okay, I'm going to leave you with three important tips about looking at the elements. Look at the element as how it relates to what's happening in your life. If you're not finding that you're getting promoted, that you're seeing, mater you're seeing material growth, and that you're seeing a wealth growing, look for both water and wood elements. Make sure that you have enough water and wood element in your home because water and wood work together to create opportunity and then the growth of wealth. If you're having any kind of a problem with thinking, with feeling like you're stuck or you're having some lethargic, this could, uh, this could be a relationship with excess earth element and that can create that, that lethargy and that feeling that you're stuck and nothing is moving like a big giant rock. All right. Now, if you are having any kind of a, a difficulty with like la lack of joy, lack of enthusiasm, optimism, excitement, that's a problem with fire. 
and that's an easy one to fix. You can get pictures of the sun or elements of fire like that are red colored. You can add birds that are related to fire or like cardinals or peacocks or obviously a red phoenix. Any kind of bird is a really good element for creating more joy and happiness. Just think about birds in the trees. They chirp and they're happy. So there you go. There are your three tips and there are the five elements for this week. I'll talk to you on the next episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui. Thanks for listening today to 5-Minute Feng Shui. I am here to tell you one last bit of good news and that is 2023 is coming and in it is a beautiful fluffy bunny and he is bringing all kinds of wonderful, beautiful things. I can't wait for the year of the rabbit to come in. We've got a lot of wonderful energy, especially for women, for love, for romance, and success this year. Find out exactly what the Year of the Rabbit means for you, for your house, for your zodiac sign by checking out my Year of the Rabbit Feng Shui Forecast and Success Pack at redlotusletter.com forward slash water rabbit. That's redlotusletter.com forward slash water rabbit.